Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and in this tutorial we're going to look at setting editors on table cells. So I've already implemented a custom renderer in the last tutorial here for this employment category table cell and the employment category column actually contains um, uh, enum constants of a, an, an enumeration class that I've created and we're displaying those with this checkbox, with this um, combo box. But what, what I want to do now is make this cell, um, these cells, this column, actually editable, so we can change the values in this combo box. Uh, so the first thing to do is, um, um, so I'm going to go to my uh, table panel here, and I'm already setting a default renderer for the employment category class. Um, and I'm going to do a similar thing for the uh, editor. I'm going to say table.set default uh, editor, and I'm going to say employment category dot class, which is the class of object that's in that table column. And I'm going to say new employment uh, category uh, uh, editor. So let's change this from renderer to editor, and that's what I've got to implement in this tutorial. So I'm just going to copy that, save it, and um, I'm going to now right-click my GUI package and go to New Class. Let's paste in the Employment Category Editor, and this this has to implement implement uh, implements Table Cell Editor as you'd expect. But since uh, since Table Cell Editor has quite a lot of methods. Um, table cell editor. I think that's right. Um, let's see. So I'll just click this error message here. And um, because my renderer implements table cell renderer, so the editor is going to implement table cell editor. Yeah. I don't know why Eclipse has been difficult there. Okay. But all's well that ends well. Now the unimplemented methods, there's quite a lot of them, as you can see. Uh, and to get default implementations for most of those, I'm just going to say extends abstract cell editor, abstract cell editor, which will give me, uh, which will implement most of these methods for me. And I'm going to go to add unimplemented methods. Well, that didn't work. Hang on. Let's add the import there, and then save it and add unimplemented methods. And there are just two that I have to implement now. And I'm also going to right click here. And I'm not sure actually if this is really strictly necessary, but I'm going to go to is cell editable. And let's return true there. Um, but this probably isn't necessary because I'm going to fix this in my table model as well, but might as well uh, change this just in case it makes a difference. I don't know. And um, now I'm going to use a combo box here. and. If you had kind of jazzed up your combo box in your renderer and um, set the colours on it and things like that, you probably want to um, have a have your renderer here as a private variable or something like that, and get the get the combo maybe in a constructor of this class from a renderer so that you get the same combo with the same colours. But in this case, I'm just using a generic combo in my renderer, so I'll use the generic combo in my editor as well. Let's add a constructor here, um, and in the constructor, I can say combo equals new J combo box. And uh, in this case, since I want to render an enumerated type, I'm going to add um, some values to my combo box, just like in the renderer, by saying employment category, which is my enumeration type dot values, uh, which will get me my enumeration constants. And um, you could add whatever values you want in there, of course, as long as they're consistent with what's actually in the table or can be in the table. So um, in get cell edi editor component, I'm going to return that combo. In get cell editor value, I'm going to return combo dot get selected item. Um, and finally, in get cell editor component, I need to say combo dot set selected value. Just like in a renderer, set selected item, sorry. And that's going to be set to value, which is this here, the actual value of the table cell that's passed in. And I also want to add an action listener to my combo, like you do with buttons. So new action listener. 
I'll have an anonymous class here where I implement the action perform method. Let's import action listener and add an action performed method here. And in here, I just want to call fire editing stopped. And that's really important to tell your um, to tell your table cell to stop using the editor and go back to using the renderer and to update the value in the table model. Now we have a little bit of work to do in the table model now. Um, I want to make sure that in get column class um, I'm returning um, employment category dot class for the class and I already implemented this in my renderer so that's okay. And um, I need to implement uh, in uh, set value at I'll also need to say case four because we're working on column four here. And don't forget break. That's very important, otherwise you'll get strange uh, errors. And I'll say person dot set uh, emp cat um, and pass in the value there. And I'll probably need to cast this value to the enumeration type employment category. So I'm providing a set method to actually set the value of the data, otherwise my combo box would work, but it wouldn't actually set the value. And as soon as you finish clicking the combo box, it would display whatever value was originally in the cell if you didn't implement this. And um, uh, in get cell editable, I also want to return true for column four to say that that column is editable. And I think that should do the trick. So if I run this now, um, we've got this now editable combo box. And let's say I set this to other, click save and click refresh. It's still got the value of other. Just to prove it, let's quit that and run it again. And we've still got other in there. But I'm going to set it back to um, employed. And maybe I'll set this to other. I don't know, click save just for some variety. OK, um, that's it for this tutorial. Join me again next time. And until next time, happy programming.